Welcome to the Too Much Dip Podcast. My name is David. I'm here to host. Joining me in studio, he's here to podcast. It's Dylan Shivery. Hello, David. Hello, KJ. Uh, there are times we come in here and it's like, what are we going to talk about? Today is not one of those days. We have an absolutely loaded episode. I don't even know how we're going to talk about all of it, but we're going to we're going to try. It's stacked up nice and thick, just as how you is, like it, Daddy. As it is content week. Oh, yeah. And we have content. Do we ever? You know who else we got or what else we got? We got a guy here wearing a SMU Ponies pullover. That's a Sharp. <clears throat> is that a QZ? God, that's good looking. It is definitely not a half Z. It's KJ. Happy to be here, fellas. Um, I'd like to first start out in um, acknowledging the rumors, if you will. Um, <clears throat> a couple things. One, um, I'm not throated. I've got my voice. I don't know. It sounds like both of you fellas have your voice. Yeah, we're not doing so, throated. This is not. <laughs> I heard you guys' pod partner was throated today. He was down, down for the count. <sighs> Couldn't what, speak. What are you doing? Did you already listen? That, that circling back out of late. No, Will's just on social meds, just letting people know. Let them Cough, know about drop, the throw technique, game. It in the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but beyond that, um, rumors are true that uh, I was spotted. Uh, looking for properties here in the Dane County, Madison, Wisconsin area over the weekend. Um, and while I'm not here to focus on the details of that uh, search, uh, I do want to say, if ever you were hunting for a house, searching for an abode, a condo, something of those sorts, if you attend an open house or maybe even just a scheduled showing with your realtor of choice, maybe, just maybe, Reconsider also bringing a three-year-old and a one and an eighteen-month-old with you, uh, as that is just pure chaos. Yeah, I think there's a number of activities that applies to. I will um, probably not do that, as I would have to borrow a, a three and a eighteen three-year-old and eighteen-month-old from someone else. <laughs> it's in play. You can borrow. I mean, I could. Can I borrow your kids to go house shopping? I don't know how that would affect yes. your like uh, leverage, your negotiating uh, stability, but yeah, if you need to. That can happen. Not and, good. Huh? Um, here in in the year of twenty and twenty three, technology is um, something that we're all more and more aware of. Yeah, it's good. Uh, have either of y'all <clears throat> run into? I mean, we've we probably already seen like the ring doorbells, but uh, like connected cameras in a house when you're viewing the property. And to what degree are you like aware of it and then try to adjust like your comments and your actions while in that environment? As I caught myself in that circumstance, realizing the camera was there after I'm like skirting the line of like CPS legal child, like wrangling. Sure. And I just look over and I'm like, I'm glad this isn't the home because uh, these people are probably just sitting in a park somewhere watching me on their phone, just scream Hey, please stop pulling at this cat tower in this house, please. <laughs> yeah, you probably, uh, you probably got a holster and he like, you know, outward like, hey, the swing would go really good right here. Uh, you know, <laughs> you don't want to vocalize that. You need to come up with some code words for you and the missus. Hypothetically. Mm, fair. Fair. I also have got to stop playing the game. Guess the race when in a house, but you know, I'll save that for another episode. Oh, wow. I'm what kidding. are what are some Definitely what are some kidding. clues that guess you know. the race? <laughs> what do you what do you look for exactly in races? You just open the refrigerator the door oh. to indicate. Oh, the okay, the fridge. <laughs> if you have that purple stuff, anyways. Okay, what are we doing today? I don't know. Don't in, don't anyways that like you didn't just bring it down this road. Like why why are we on this street right now? Well, because you were you were driving the car and you turned on it. <laughs> How do we get here? KJ. Oh, guess the race. It's not a new segment on the show. Oh, Randy's I, got I, something. I, I got a question for KJ. KJ, do uh, you know Dave it? and Dylan are both uh, playing Fortnite. When are we going to get you back on the sticks and squad up with the boys? I wouldn't say I'm playing mm. Fortnite. I'm mostly watching my son play. Esports. 
you're an esports coach. You're like that's a level beyond playing yourself. Um, oh, you know, he's coaching me. The kid's nice on the <sighs> sticks. He is low key it's, nice it's with it. Mind blowing. I I will say I echo um, Sizzle Squad member Klein's r- response when when you drop the news that uh, there are no build games available in Fortnite. Um, now, if you <laughs> promise me I don't have to play with like a LeBron James avatar wearing like a marshmallow hat <laughs> or, you know, helmet or whatever, then, um, you know, I could certainly find myself turning it back on. I, I'm, I'm done lying to myself. My uh, attempts at trying to like re-download and repurchase and get back into Warzone full time or to an extent where I'm not embarrassing myself, I'm just not there yet. I'm on it's like college football lift. 2025 countdown. Ooh, you got to put hours in to be you know decent, be able to handle the chopper. You know, yeah. If you want like, that chopper the singing, to you not gotta, hate yourself for doing it. <laughs> got to log some hours. You can't just you can't just download Fortnite, pick up the blicky blicky, and think you're going to go out there and yeah. pwn some noobs. It doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. Although just, I did catch a dub silly. my first game. There's so there's too much goofy shit in that game. Everyone's it is on. It dancing. is a silly game. It's, it's a, a di- silly boy game. It was a disco bomb makes people dance for like five seconds or some shit. It's it's wild. The Ooh. boogie bomb. <laughs> boogie bomb. I didn't get one of those. You drop it. It looks like a uh, what do you call it? A disco ball. And if you if you throw it at someone, it makes them dance for a pipe. They can't like switch guns and shit. It's it's goofy. It's we do something like that down at the Dick Saloon on uh, you, Thursday nights. What do you call it? Uh, uh, just it's just the Dicky bomb. It's a Dicky bomb. Yeah. Just makes everyone start grinding. Something like that. Yeah. Well, goofy I miss shit. that. No wonder Rennie likes the game so much. It's all the goofy shit. I got. I came in this morning all like puffing my, you know, pounding my chest, puffing it out a little bit, confident. Randy's like, "Ah, you're you're probably playing with bots." <laughs> what? I guess that's a thing. I don't know. If so, like, if the game is smart enough to say, like, "Hey, they already know like your age and everything, and how many times you've played." But if the game was smart enough to throw you in like some confidence booster games, and you have no idea. That's beautiful. That's smart. That's the AI world. Like, yeah. I need a game lying to me and give me some free dubs. It's just good business. Just to, like, get me in. Yeah. That's like winning slots early on. I, I appreciate that. False confidence. Look, I've, I've built an entire empire on false confidence. There it is. <laughs> I'm going to do some podcasting now, okay? Time to get serious. Okay. Hey, we do have a live stream this Thursday. 6.30 Central. Only on the Too Much Dip YouTube page. So go subscribe if you have not. Tell some friends to pop in. Does anybody have the game uh, off the top of their head? Thursday Night Football. Bengals, Ravens, I believe. Ooh. Let's see. Or it might be Browns, Ravens. But it is, uh, yeah, Bengals, Ravens. Sure about that? Yes. Um, as uh, one uh, individual, Ravens? as somebody who... Got ahead of the curve, put all the picks into uh, the dip picks form three days early after like four straight weeks of being like two days late. I did look at the schedule quite a bit this morning. A couple teams coming off tough losses, interestingly enough. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got a, finally got a good one. Yeah, I'm sure there's been other good, good one. ones, but I just assume any any <clears throat> nighttime game, since every other game is Jets related, is going to be trash. But looks <laughs> like this Thursday is not going to be trash. So shout out to Thursday it's, Night Football. Sunday night football, I think, is uh, Colorado versus the Jets. Like, they're just going to let the two teams play and just, you know, save you from having to watch the Buffs on another channel and the Jets on a different one. Colorado? Those two programs will just oh, do it out. Exactly. I see what you're doing. Mm. I got you. Very cool. Um, Any other announcees before we get kicked off, Dave? No. Yeah, I guess I do kind of have an announcement. That, an- that announcement is prize picks. Our good friends at prize picks. What is that exactly? Well, prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, Dylan. Mm-hmm. They're, they're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. Just you against the numbers. Kind of like me against the bots. Remember that? Yeah. It's not like that at all, actually. It's different. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, 
You pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection and watch the winnings roll in. With the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. Example, uh, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey in a 10.5-point uh, combo of three-pointers made and receptions. See what I'm, see what I'm doing here? Mm-hmm. You want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in prize picks community each week. Um, I couldn't help but notice someone highlighted Andrew's name. Is there something going on there? All right. Wouldn't me, Dave. All right. It's KJ just jumping around on the rundown, distracting the D man. Prize picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games. You if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second that player's rebooted price picks is the only dfs platform with an injury insurance policy that's huge that's fantastic you just don't see that on other dfs platforms man you really don't go to pricepicks.com slash dip and use code dip for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. go to pricepicks.com slash dip and use code dip dip for a first deposit match up to $100, daily fantasy sports made easy. Shout out prize picks. What was it? What were you doing? Did I say the name wrong? No. Full disclosure. Let me give it a couple seconds. Make sure we've got some separation here in case we need air checks. But uh, I was trying to figure out who Mr. Schultz was and if uh, it was or was not the uh, cartoonist behind Peanuts. Definitely not the same person. No, he's a he's a very I'm edgy. Not comedian. sure if they're related. He's a very very edgy comedian. Very very good. Psst. I think a reputable person you'd certainly want to be associated with. I agree. <laughs> Hilarious. It seems the internet would agree too. So yeah, checks out. Checks out. Not sure if there's any relation. Unconfirmed. It, I just you got to think it's not a relation. Although you know, my son, we did discover he discovered uh, Char- the world of Charlie Brown over the, over the weekend. So. Just a little tie in there with the peanuts thing. We watched, cool. we watched the Charlie Brown Christmas. Like an old, oh, the old school one. The old school one, which it's classic. That's an absolute classic. I don't think I've actually watched it since like 1993. I've, I know obviously the music. I know the, the, the important scenes from it. I've never watched it start to finish since I was a child. It's a nostalgia play. Big time. Yeah. He liked it. Love it. <sighs> What's going on in Michigan? It's been, <laughs> it's been very well documented, actually. Why don't you break it down here in like uh, 60 seconds or less? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jim Harbaugh was suspended for three games because of the sign-stealing scandal. Uh, most swiftly on this, this was handed down by the, the Big Ten, correct, and not by the NCAA? Correct. 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 They moved very swiftly on this. I didn't think we, we'd see anything happen this season, actually. Yeah, what is this, like Travis Kelsey moving so swiftly? Jesus. That's good. That I like sucked. that. Delete yeah. that from the show. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, nope. so uh, add it as a tag. We, we need it. SEO. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Saturday against Penn State was the first of three games that Harbaugh was suspended, found out en route to Happy Valley on the plane, got off, and it was greeted by a team of somebody. I don't know. Team of people. They're like, hey, man, you can't. You got to stop here, pal. You better look out, Buster. You better look out. <laughs> they were like kind of just ch- champing at the bit, like do something. No, nah, that's not how it went down at all. Um, Is this the uh, worst news that you could receive while on the way to Happy Valley? Some are saying maybe. Because it's called Happy Valley. Um, well, what, what are you doing there? I don't know. Lots of people, you know, theater of the mind. Everybody else can fill in the blanks here. Well, let me say this. Um, let me say this. Uh, people are asking, are they actually, is Michigan better off without Harbaugh? Want to know? This is the fifth game without him this year, right? That's a good point. Yeah. Is this much of a punishment? I mean, it punishes one exactly one person. The team gets off pretty much scot-free. Yes, they don't have like the in-game uh, coaching mind of Harbaugh on the sideline, but – Big brain. I mean, he still gets to help devise a game plan and – Yes, he is there during the week. He's right. able to uh, do what Dylan, Dylan, Dylan a, suggested. This is such a weak-ass punishment. 
See, I don't think it is. Really? I mean, no bullpen. I mean, these I, are three. These are who did? The, what's the schedule? So, Penn State, Ohio State. I don't know who else. Football, football team, Maryland. I think. Oh uh, yeah, a, a football team of their choosing <laughs> before the <this> schedule. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it doesn't affect. It doesn't affect much, right? Uh, you know, how much does your head coach being on the sideline help with the actual gameplay? I'm going to, I'm going to leave it up to KJ as KJ has played at the highest levels and I will let him take it from here. Go ahead. Um, I think in most situations it would be very detrimental, but given that, uh, Jim Harbaugh has been suspended earlier this year by Michigan, uh, for four games and they had. I appreciated their approach. They had a different coach like every week, basically like take the lead of head coach, which I think is, you know, his way of uh, empowering his head coaches and getting other, you know, experience shared around. So because they had that experience already, it's not as detrimental, but uh, if our question is, is this the appropriate punishment? Um, I, I don't understand why we don't see more fines in this situation. Uh, and I also don't know what leverage the Big Ten would have to be able to fine Michigan. Uh, but I feel like a fine might be more appropriate if you're going to, like, pass judgment this quick. I also don't understand why the hell NC, the NCAA is like, yeah, we won't know until next year. Like, we're not going to figure this out anytime soon. But right. we will provide information to the Big Ten that supports, like, the fact that this did occur. And then they're going to spend like six months trying to figure out, well, who else knew? And it shouldn't take that long. Do you think uh, this is not the case at all, but what if like the, the the coaching carousel that they did, you know, beginning of the year, see, kind of just seeing who's got it? Is this Harbaugh being like, look, some shit's about to come down. <laughs> it's about to get wild at the end of the season here. We need to see who's got the, got the uh, cojones to run this thing while I'm out. Yeah, and for, for a ruling to be handed out this quickly – there was some pretty damning evidence. I do think I do agree with that, but I do hate the fact that you, okay, I don't hate it because I don't really care that much, but I do think it's kind of lame to do something like this right in the middle of the season. Um, I think, I think I kind of agree with that NCAA's take. It's like, we'll get to it after the season, figure it out then. Cause it's not like no one's getting harmed. This isn't like a, name the scandal where there's like wrongdoing people are getting harmed making art briles right um <clears throat> other scandals um but i don't know i guess maybe i've kind of overrated how big of a factor harbaugh is if it's me and i'm a, an assistant and i get promoted like hey you're up this week you're coaching i'm benching mccarthy and putting in davis yeah you that's have my to. first move you have to I'm putting them in. I got to see what the kids got. Maybe run them out there against Maryland. Um, what do you think about that, KJ? Added force field for PR purposes, of course. There we go. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. Then you, it makes it look like you're self-imposing some uh, some penalties as well. Um, the fact that they came away with the win, score a little bit deceiving to what it was. Like, I don't know. I, I I wish I had more perspective of like a, a Big Ten fan that was present to a team that like actually could compete wow. on this level within the conference. That is so mean. <laughs> Wisconsin's certainly yeah. not there. Um, oh, okay. I thought you meant the other guy. Yeah, I thought you were coming no. at me, KJ. <laughs> I'm no, three and seven. Well, shit, you too. <laughs> <laughs> like the entire Big Ten West has no room to like be vocal about this because it won't matter. Um, but Penn State, like, what can you say? Harbaugh wasn't there. It got beat. If Ohio State screws around and loses to Michigan as well, like it's it's uh, I don't know. I think Michigan stands to like gain whatever credit um, if they come out of this three and zero these weeks going into college football playoff week. I don't want to hear anything after that point of like they shouldn't be there if they beat Penn State on the field and beat Ohio State on the field. Like, Penn State, um, so I watched this entire game. This mm -hmm. was like the the game that I was focused on Saturday. And I was like, you know what? This is this is the big story. Let's watch it. And man, 
Uh, I know it's probably cool being a Penn State fan because your team's your team is seemingly always right on the cusp of being in the mix. <laughs> but man, are they boring as fuck to watch. What was the James Franklin botched situation at the end of the game? I saw a lot of booty chatter about it, but I didn't I didn't see fourth, how it ended. I think he went I, if I remember he went for a fourth down and they'd had a number of like fourth and shorts that he did not go for and I think the thought was like why did you go for it? here and it just was very inconsistent it kind of seemed almost seemed like somebody bullied him into going it was weird like it was almost like he was checking twitter during the game he wasn't <laughs> gotta be but, one of those always go or never go type things like you've gotta yeah, be consistent. stick to whatever your plan is yeah, yeah. Um, um can i can i give a uh, shout out to our friend jake kemp he had a great tweet about james franklin um at not jack kemp on twitter and I think he's right. He said, this is probably a foolish thought, but it's amazing to me that with all the high school football talent, as advanced as it is, this is how Penn State plays offense. I swear just a roster of three-star players from Texas could roll this, which is pretty, you know, a little hyperbolic, but uh, I think it's a, it's a valid point because watching it, I'm just like, dude, how do they – how do you get like a, a four- or five-star to want to come play in that offense? It's in, it's it's weird because Wisconsin's gone the other direction to bring it back to like you know things that I kind of have some perspective on like Wisconsin brought in Phil Longo who's kind of a air raid esque offensive coordinator tried to install that with Tanner Mordecai former Oklahoma and SMU quarterback and they've underwhelmed they've had a lot of injuries they're down to like third running back Mordecai missed some time but even before the injuries their offense was underproducing quite a bit. And I think that goes back to, in Texas, you have a situation where seven-year-olds are running spread offenses and throwing the ball in flag football or seven-on-seven setup leagues at that age. I don't know or think that's as prevalent in Pennsylvania, Ohio, certainly not here in Wisconsin where they have three rounds before the state title game and old man Mia screaming about how dumb that is. Um I don't think the rest of the country like has that level of like depth of knowledge to be able to just say, bring in an OC who can sling it around and they'll figure it out because you're going to have a roster full of, you know, uh, players who aren't ready for it, at least on the offensive side. Fair. Um, we got to shout out our man. How do you say, uh, the interim coach Sharon, 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 Sharon. Sharon. my Sharoni played a yeah, former, uh, sooner <laughs> grade. Uh, line, right? Sharon Moore, mm -hmm. interim head coach <clears throat> for Michigan. They got the dub, obviously, as we talked about. Want to know? And uh, the on-field interview after the game, water, um, just absolute waterworks. Which, which, uh, which very, very old man did he call out? <laughs> <laughs> he's like he talks about how he's like J I love Jim. Har I love you, Jim Harbaugh. Like. Like the man died. I mean, it was it was, it was truly bizarre. Was, the, okay, yes, it it was. I will say this is probably like this is the pinnacle of this guy's coaching career. Did he drop an f bomb too? Like yeah, he, he cussed. I, too. I think he did. I think he did use some some naughty language, How if I'm not mistaken. You. Which which honestly, like he should apologize for. Yeah. Also, I'm going to also add on to this how Michigan, they printed the T-shirts. It was like Michigan versus everybody. Love like it. the way they've, they've been able to spin this as like a, a victimization situation is, is I, don't, I, don't, I don't, props to them for like using that to maybe, you know. You got to fundraise off of it. Maybe this to, is... uh, you know, encourage the players or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, a little bizarre. Like you guys got caught cheating. This is not, uh, this is not, you know. The ops hate this. It was, it, it's just a little silly, a little silly. This, I will say about, um, about him. Cause I did, I watched it and I was like, okay, yeah, that was, that was a lot, but he, he's never, he's never been a head coach. Um, I think he, earlier this year, does he have aspirations oh, to did be? He, was he part coach? of that? Okay. Yeah. Probably but still, because like, and not in a leverage situation. I was like against like New Mexico or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that accurate. screams like happy to be here to me not like i want to be a head coach one day i'm talking like crocodile tears like the guy was bawling he was sobbing well michigan was bawling did you see him out there they were playing quite well yeah <laughs> all right i'm gonna stop talking y'all two do the show and that's even uh the was he just Davis doing said. cover fire for caleb williams like you know normalizing the tears for a grown man it was just football. weird 
Like you guys are um, not the victims here. Well, okay. I would ask this: uh, any other circum or any other situations that we can think of where a team has like defiantly ry- rallied around their head coach uh, in in this sort of uh, situation? First, that comes for my, comes to mind for me. Just earlier this year in the Big Ten, when Pat Fitzgerald got fired at Northwestern after hazing in preseason, uh, the players showed up wearing Cats Against the World t-shirts, and then like their AD immediately like was like saying, "Hey, we don't support this." The interim coach was like, "That's not, you know, we don't support this. We're not for it." Michigan clearly has the support here, but uh, any other circumstance? I don't know. Yeah. Any acronyms? Anything you can think of, David? Yes. Up around Waco way. Actually, just in Waco. <laughs> What's the acronym? CAB, Coach Art Bryles. Mm. I think Kendall, uh, Kendall Bryles, his son, for the record, uh, he think he did he get a Sharpie and cheaply write it on his hand at one point. It was like, okay, it's... On his, uh, like, wrist tape or whatever. Yeah, wristbands. it was but very, then like... people were, like, had flags and T-shirts the following week with the same They were so, acronym. They, that was, okay, to, to defend... Clip, don't clip this. To defend Baylor, <laughs> that was not the school. There was people, to my knowledge, selling like Art Bryles merch. They were there were fans who were very stoked on Baylor because, like, oh, I don't know, they'd literally been terrible forever, and this is like their thing. This is all they had outside of basketball, and they were very upset. They didn't know all the facts, and uh, but yes, the the CAB thing did not go over well, and probably uh, I think to most didn't age entirely well, but. Um, We'll save that for another day because I'd like to continue to to wear this headset and keep doing the show. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> they were killing it in basketball before that. You're right. Um, anything else on Michigan? No. There's like 12 people who get that joke. <laughs> this is the best part of my day. <laughs> what references to go over, over everyone's head? They killed a guy. I know. I don't, I don't remember the circumstances, um, but I do remember that. There was one a, guy, two guy, two teammates, it was, I believe, oh, yeah. drug-related, and one guy got... What murder? It was the one that the coach covered up. Oh, okay. Tried right. to say, no, say, right. say it was drugs, which I don't know. Actually, I shouldn't have said it was drug-related. I don't really know what the problem, what happened there. I have nothing else on Michigan. This whole thing's just silly to me. I yeah, I, I found myself me, pulling, uh, kind of pulling for him just because I like the chaos and like the two teams I... Really root for well, fuck the three teams. Like none of them, none of them won this weekend, and they're all kind of out of the mix. So I'm just like, let's just give me the chaos, give me Harbaugh, give me uh, give me Michigan, give me Harbaugh sick, saying he's gonna do push-ups and eat an apple, um, during his presser. Give me all that. That just happened, by the way. <laughs> That's an actual quote. Dylan, tell me what happened after I stopped watching Texas TCU. Immediately after Savion Williams, TC receiver, made quite an impressive play, but I thought was going to be relatively inco- inconsequential. Uh, I think he got like a crossing pattern, scored it, scored on it, whatever. But at that point, I think the score was what, 29 to 6 before the score or 29? I don't remember. What happened? Uh, first of all, that dude is an absolute baller. That was sick. Hats off to Sa- Savion Williams, is his name. I want him to portal to Texas. That dude's just a freak. Greedy. Yeah, I get it. Um, <laughs> this has been the pattern for Texas over the past few weeks. We saw this against Houston. We saw this against Kansas State. And we saw it the other night against TCU. I don't know what's going on. Sark seems to have a really strong game plan going in, and he's jumping out to these big leads. And then for whatever reason, it starts to unravel late second quarter, third quarter, and then in fourth by the, by the time the fourth quarter rolls around, Texas is just flat out getting outplayed by opponents that they probably shouldn't be getting outplayed by. I don't know what's going on. He doesn't adjust in the game, and he just gets – he's really stubborn with his game planning, and he'll just – if it'll start to work, and then the other team will make adjustments, and he doesn't make adjustments himself. He just keeps sticking to whatever he's doing, and – I don't know. I mean, it's hard to complain too much because Texas went from, you know, five and seven to what was it, eight and three or four to now they're nine and one. So there's definite improvement. They're finding ways to win games, even um, games where they let, you know, the opponent climb back in. But it's really frustrating to watch. 
the team that Texas the team that Texas was when they played Alabama is not the team we're looking at anymore. Like they have not gotten they're not playing to that level anymore. And I don't really know what it is. Uh yours, you know, he was hurt. He he missed a couple of games. He didn't look completely like himself, but the defense is also giving up these huge chunk plays in the second halves of these games. I don't really know what the hell's going on. Texas still has a chance to make the playoff, but if they do, I think it's going to not go well for them if they keep playing like this. Not really sure what's going on. Uh, it's, it's frustrating And to things watch. seem to have gotten harder for them after uh, an injury as well, right? Yes. Uh, star running back Jonathan Brooks tore his ACL, I believe, in the fourth quarter of that game on a play that really didn't look that bad. A lot of people, a lot of Texas fans are claiming that it was a dirty, like kind of like gator roll tackle. I, I disagree. I think it was fairly clean. Um, but yeah, torn ACL. The kid was projected to be possibly the number one running back taken in the draft. Had like 1,200 yards rushing. Also like two, 300 yards receiving. Just having an excellent year. And so he's out. That's going to hurt. He's probably been the offensive MVP up to this point for Texas. So that sucks. Uh, true freshman CJ Baxter will be getting the start. Oh, man. What is he a four star or a five star? He's a five star kid, but he, <laughs> it's so nice. But, but, but I, I get it. The I get fucking it. depth. But is Brooks, crazy. like Brooks, was clearly better than him. Like he's an absolute baller. He was. That, that he's really a good sucks. player. Really he good is player. Good player. Good kid. So that stinks. Yeah, I'm frustrated with Texas right now. Nine and one looks great on paper. I get it. But if you watch the games, it's there's a lot to be worried about moving forward. And these games left I, at Iowa State. Uh, that's that's not a rollover game. Like that's going to be a, a probably a tough game at this point. That's a scrappy little team out there in Ames. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Big Twelve's uh, yeah. kind of crapping their pants a little bit here toward the end. Yeah. Um, well, I mean Texas won, but I know. know but uh, oh, you've got two losses now. Oklahoma State. What the hell was that, uh, dude? <laughs> Do we want to jump there? Let's let's just jump into conference championships because i think let's do firings after that or coaching care so yeah. that because i did try to uh i think before we had the rundowns that we were talking going to talk about like the play the college football playoff picture i was like well you know you see how much just went wrong this last weekend let me at least take a pick at how many of the conference title games are locked up acc is basically going to be florida florida state's a lock but either louisville or unc Georgia and Alabama is already set and scheduled. Uh, Big 10, you've got winner of uh, Ohio State and Michigan, assuming both teams beat, I believe it's Maryland and somebody else for Ohio State. Um, and then Iowa is in the control. Like, mm. unless Iowa loses out, Iowa's going to be there. Challenging. Uh, on the Pac 12 side, most likely Washington, unless they lose out, versus Oregon, Oregon State winner. Now, into the Big 12, as y'all were just talking about. Texas in the driver's seat with one loss. Oklahoma State. Dude. It's pretty much a shoe-in to be there. Yeah, they have, they have to hold the tiebreaker over Kansas State in Oklahoma, correct? Yeah. Correct. And Iowa State. Well, I, I don't know if they've played, but yeah. They... I, I don't want to make of them. that You beat Oklahoma... And then you lose. What was that? Forty? What was it? Forty-five-three? Was that the final score? Was, they got UCF demolished. What was uh, that? UCF is. I mean, I, I my only point of reference, the only start to finish UCF game I've watched this year was when they blew a twenty-nine point lead to Baylor at home. <laughs> and like, I get got to give it to them. They learned and they uh, did not make that mistake again to a way better opponent opponent than Baylor. Uh, I don't know. I was with Dan, our uh, resident um, UCF alum, and he's like, he's just like disgusted. He's like, I don't, I don't even know what this fucking thing is. Like, <laughs> he's, they're at that weird point to where they could go out and get run by anybody, and yeah. they could also go out there and beat the, a good Okie State team. Yeah, that's a game. If you tell me that UCF wins the game, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty surprised they won the game, but by forty plus points, who saw that coming? It's so fun. It's unbelievable. Like, all the all the goodwill, like the people, like. After Bedlam, like, oh, dude, Gundy, man. People were, you know, the, his people wanted him out. Look, he do, goes and does this. And then he follows it up with, like, just a monumental turd. <laughs> a monumental turd. 
big old. I verbatim said that was like a career extender for him at Oklahoma. Yeah. And this, I feel like changes things, you know, whatever negotiations started after that game probably got put on hold uh, to see how things finish out. Um, Quick glance at their point differential within the big 12. Uh, Texas is, you know, quick math about plus 150 points for versus points against, you know, whatever. Oklahoma State plus 15. Oklahoma about plus 200. Iowa State's plus 60. Kansas State's like plus 200. Like what I'm getting at here is Oklahoma State's point differential is way worse than anybody else in the Big 12. That's not like a losing record team until you get to four and six TCU, who's like plus 40, basically. So their defense is not great. They lost to Southern Alabama earlier in the year. That's when I wrote them off, um, or South Alabama. I don't, and they could be playing Texas in the Big 12 title game. Like, if I'm a Texas fan, I'm like, hey, we handle our business against Iowa State, who's still in the title game mix with two losses in the conference. And your path to, you know, one loss season and sitting at the doorstep of the college football playoff is about as easy as that you could ask for. It's it's so easy though that I I worry that if Texas does cruise to a conference championship, which is obviously huge for them, they have they have very rarely done that in recent history. Uh, the resume doesn't look great for a playoff. They have to have some things really go their way because like their their schedule is is losing a lot of oomph right now, and it's uh, it's not going to look pretty. It, they're probably going to need some yeah. help. Other teams. Cuts both ways. I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And as we just talked about their fourth quarter, uh, their ability to give up a large lead yeah. late in the game. Yeah. If that translates to their season, you don't want that. Right. Um, but the Big 12 is probably the most intriguing conference aside from maybe <clears throat> the American Athletic Conference where SMU got really lucky. They don't play Tulane or UTSA. Uh, they do have Memphis this week. Highly fa- heavily favored. I only bring up that conference because Tulane is currently slotted to be a New Year's Six team. Um, we'll see if they hold on to that. Okay. You guys want to talk uh, Jimbo? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, surprise. Can I quickly happened? mention the 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 note that uh, Texas A&M beat the piss out of Mississippi State, and both coaches got fired. Yeah, the timing that of it was a bit odd. Kind of wild. Me. They beat the <laughs> shit out of Mississippi State. <laughs> so this has been uh, tells me this has been in the works for a while now, right? Yeah. Um, last week played a close game against Ole Miss. I don't know. I mean, yeah, they've they've clearly been. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> People have been calling for this for a while. And I did not think it would happen in the se- mid-season. The only thing that changed is that they were definitively eliminated from the um, conference title game. But it's like they had three losses going into last week within the conference. That was basically saying you would need Alabama to have lost. No, th- they were out of it already. Yeah, Alabama was uh, they had six wins, and they, they wouldn't have been able to get there unless Alabama lost out. So I don't know, man. It, it definitely smells of a booster finally got on the phone and said, yeah, here's the check. My least favorite thing about this, speaking of boosters, is uh, I, I understand it's embarrassing if you're an A&M fan, but just like, the, yeah, man, well, we got the money, so <clears throat> we got it like that. Doesn't matter. It's nothing to us. It's like okay. So here's a, a this hit, this hit Twitter uh, recently, and I, it's extremely interesting. It it's compares the most expensive firings in college football history. Um, I'm just going to go up the list. Kevin Sumlin, nine point nine million. Next up, Chad Morris, ten point one. Larry Fedora, twelve. Jim Mora, twelve. Then you got twelve point eight, twelve point nine, fifteen point four, which was Tom Herman. Willie Taggart at eighteen. Charlie Weiss, eighteen point nine. Gus Malzahn, twenty one point four. Jimbo Fisher, 77.6. The gap between <laughs> first and second place is like $55 million. Mm, inflation. Over, over $55 million. Like that is, it's embarrassing. That's humiliating. It's coachflation. That's what they're calling it. That's what KJ is calling it, probably. 
Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's imagine, getting a che- imagine getting that much money to not work. <laughs> like that, your severance package. Like here you go. Got that nice old Sevy. Unbelievable. Yeah. His the dumbest contract in college football history. Right? Does he coach again? Yeah. I was just looking up his age to have an idea. Of- Certainly doesn't have to. No, I just don't, man. Uh, Jimbo Fisher is uh, He's such see, a goofy idiot. 58. He's only 58. Uh, Technically, what? this buyout locks him from coaching until he would be 65, 66 if he were to honor it. It's, yeah, eight years. Um, he also has the option of saying, I want a job bad enough to not sit out for seven mil a year. And when you put it that way, you're like, oh, well. If somebody's going to guarantee me 10 mil, why not just sign that? So A&M might get off the hook here. I don't know what the language is, but I believe it's if he chooses to take another job, like most buyouts, if you take another head coaching job or his probably was written to the NFL as well, like A&M's off the hook. So, you know, if his pride's big enough and he doesn't want to retire. God, you know maybe, what I want to see? I, not him on ESPN, please. I definitely don't want to see him on ESPN, but I want to see one of these coaches that like gets bought out and just it's very unceremonious. And it's like, yeah, you know, it wasn't good. But then they just go and do something else. Like he like goes and becomes like a, a, a great chef. And like he like or he like he got goes back to school and does like some career. Like he's like, you know what? I've always wanted to get into accounting. Been a big numbers yeah. guy. <laughs> And like they become like the darling of like the accounting world. You can just yeah try all your passion and projects. Loaded. At this exactly. Point. If they're not football related, just <laughs> what the hell? Learn to paint. Uh, yeah. Your 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 bare feet in the bathtub. Try like to make uh, the, the ex president. Try to make the uh, champions tour. I just it's, anything. Like you're you're set. That would be sick. But if you Jimbo's like, Angler Services. If you sign a like, there's there's a reason why contracts aren't structured like this. I didn't even hear what he said. It's a fishing joke. Uh, what he got like a t- he got ten years and he was the second highest paid coach in the country behind Saban I believe. Like your incentive to to be really good at your job just I don't know. Well, also they gave him didn't they give him a plaque? They said <laughs> national champion two uh, zero blank, implying that you know we're going to fill this in at some point when you win. This is lofty. Didn't happen. It's a bull, it's a really bold move. Didn't happen. Zero uh, 10 win season, zero conference championships. 70 some odd years to make good on that. You never know. You can come back. It's true. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, there were other changes in head coaching around the country. I mentioned uh, Mississippi State firing their coach, who's 37, by the way, fourth youngest coach in uh, college. I believe the youngest, also from the Mike Leach tree, Eric Morris at UNT. Um, Mississippi State firing a coach during the year of, he took over the position as an interim. I guess they decided to make him the permanent, and they gave him 11 games. Not letting him finish out the season seems ridiculous. I don't know what kind of like unrest there was in the locker room or the specifics or if there was anything else unsavory, but I feel like, Short of scandal, you could probably have sat on this for two weeks. Uh, the early signing period had passed. Like, you're not making a huge recruiting push if you're Mississippi State at this point in the season. Unless you're walking in, I don't know, Urban Meyer, what are you doing? Like, there's just not a name out there I can think of that justifies, like, kicking someone out, like, in that leverage of a situation this, at this point. Less notable, Boise State fired their coach. Brady Hoax retiring from San Diego State, former Michigan coach. Um, if you are in College Station, if you're uh, if you're the uh, Doug Demodome booster, <laughs> you got the you got the deep pockets, you got the bag. Who who do you are they going to do the the smart thing and go get like uh, a Jeff Trailer from UTSA, a guy who can like recruit Texas, knows every high school football coach. Like that, or is that name not good enough? That's not a big enough name. Do you need to make a splash hire? As because obviously Jimbo, uh, who was also a splash hire, worked out so well. I'm curious what they're thinking. Jimbo's, you know, relatively fresh off of a national championship. So, um, who would be top on your list, or who do, who do you envision as top like candidate out there for any job? 
A&M or otherwise. I feel like this is the biggest paying position, SEC. I don't think any other jobs are going to come open above A&M. I keep seeing Mike Elko's name thrown around for A&M, who's the head coach for Duke. I think he had mm-hmm. think he used Former to. Former A&M coach. Yeah, he used to be an assistant there. Uh, and he's done a good job with a, a basketball school. So that's interesting. Um, Urban Meyer's name always comes up. Oh, please. For high-profile jobs. I would, as a Texas fan, I would absolutely love that. I just, I mean, even, uh, yeah, uh, content-wise, that's got to happen. Yeah, yeah. Dan Dan Lanning's another name, too. Dan Lanning's name is, is getting thrown around as well. And uh, assuming, like, that the only reason anybody would take like leave a job like that or you see Lane Kiffin is, is money. A guy who I think would do an excellent job, but he's probably not a, a big enough splash, is uh, Jeff Trailer, UTSA. Yeah. Co-sign that. That dude can coach. Yes, he can. Been quite good. My pick, and I don't think it'll happen, he signed a strangely large payout. Uh, nothing would be too big for A&M, but whatever. Jamie Chadwell, who took uh, the Liberty position after running the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers into national uh, fame. <clears throat> 10 0 at Liberty in his first year right now. So the guy can clearly coach, but I believe his entire career and life is like tied to the mid Atlantic. So I don't see that coming to pass. Maybe uh, you fast forward whenever Mac Davis or Mac Davis, Mac Brown retires, you know, a, a role like that might attract him or, you know, I don't know. Maybe Clemson decides to stay. Uh, in the ACC, and if I'm a and do you go throw a bag at Dabo? Oh, my God. But, That's the only thing that could be as good as, as, oh, I would as Urban love Meyer. That too. I, would love I would say that uh, values align. <laughs> Dude, he's <laughs> so hateable. He would, I would love it. He would lean into that so freaking hard, oh my too. God. Oh, it would He'd be, be so running good. yell practice as like oh. a core member or whatever, or whatever, as a yell leader. He would wear those he would voluntarily. Be so insufferable. Oh, my God. I would love it. Oh, it would be so good. He's a, he's a damn good coach. I wouldn't love that part of it, but he's so corny and unlikable. <laughs> you get Venables and uh, Dabo playing each other again regularly. Mm. Or not again, but you know what I mean? Playing each other he's regularly. not leaving Clemson, though. Uh, so, yeah, that that would be my, like, Jimbo Fisher-esque hire. My, my recommended and definitely probably won't happen is, like, Jamie Chadwell is better than the jobs that he's been in, it seems like. Dude, it would be crazy, man, if they would just go, if they went and got Aranda from Baylor. Like, man, that would oh, that'd be freaking terrible, man. What's he doing? Is he just trying to tank his stock as much as possible? What was his quote? I think he's honestly a great guy who does not think of, like, optics of, like, what he's saying in a, in a loss. He's basically said, and he's done this more than one – like after one game, he's like basically says like yeah like we've we've quit and it's really bad in the locker room right now. He, Essentially, is what he said. I mean, potentially like at a for a guy who won a sugar won the conference and won a Sugar Bowl just a couple years ago, his media optics are as bad as anybody. Like, and not bad. Like he gets, um, you know, gets after the media and bl- starts blaming them. Bad and bad as in like, dude, you're sharing, you're being too honest. Yeah, exactly. You're sharing too much. These and are things like, you don't say to the to the media. To somebody, the somebody in the group text was like, dude, he's probably going to have to find another job, and this is not helping. No, at least not from a, a head coaching standpoint. Yeah, because the interviewer is going to ask him like, can you explain like how you thought this would be beneficial to the program? Yeah, like I got nothing. Sorry, I just I slipped. Uh, I've up. got the quote. Oh. Uh, it's becoming like my weekly favorite text to throw in the group chat is whatever his quote is after halftime. Uh, but this week it was, and I quote, I don't know if it gets any lower than this. I feel pretty low right now. Jesus. <laughs> it's him on the radio after the game, not even like on, on the spot in like the press conference. Like that's him calling into the station for like his, you know, obligatory radio show. Like that's so bad. He's going to have to take a coordinator job. I'm sure he'll succeed at it. But man, <laughs> he's a defense guy. Right? I don't think we've ever seen someone talk yeah. them. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen anybody talk themselves out of like consideration. And I feel he's, like he's doing it. He's extremely. His team. I mean, ha- having followed every Baylor game for the last couple of years, it, they come out flat every game. Like there's something like, and it's it's a pattern. Like they they come out and they get in a big hole. And if you play a team like UCF, maybe you can come back. Kansas State, 
you can't make it interesting and it's bad they're gonna miss a bowl again and it's Mayo's, it's weird and then we got tcu baylor this week coming out flat may have something to do with the coach just absolutely tanking the vibes he's a vibe tanker yeah he showed it what was it he showed him uh clips from godfather one before uh it was the texas game or some game you're like it's crazy yeah, it, it didn't work a great movie man i just don't know how it's resonating with the uh with the with the teens yeah godfather one uh, like potentially like the most like slow slow burn <laughs> slow burn i don't know what you're doing man show him john wick anyway yeah, yeah go. he's got to be uh I, I need to put him at the front of the line for usc or colorado like he needs to be somewhere where somebody else's son's overshining him the offense is doing their thing and he can actually teach like fundamentals mm -hmm. uh, to the defense as a Anyhow. conference championship though it's, it can't hasn't been great away since. From them. You can't. No, it was quite impressive. Um, what do we want to do now? I don't know what we can do. I would be remiss if we did not give a great big shout out to our good friends at HelloFresh. Hello. With, with, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit, Dylan. Mm -hmm. The holidays are right around the corner, and HelloFresh can make can help take the stress out of your dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up tasty meals right to your door, saving you tons of time. The holiday seasons can be hectic. We're hosting for the first time this year, straight up. Very hectic. Ooh, That's already exciting. hectic. And that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get wholesome meal on the table in less than in less time than it takes to get delivery. Everyone wants to come back on errands and spending time in the checkout line this time of year, so skip that extra grocery store run and instead get fresh ingredients and delicious recipes delivered with HelloFresh. Just pick your meals, decide on a delivery date, and sit back. It's that easy, man. I This is the time of year where I, I dread going to the store more than any. It's just too much. Everybody's everybody's panicked. Everyone's included. panicked, man. It's just it's a total it's just chaos in there. That's why you gotta go with HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash bang free and use code bang free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash bang free with code bang free. Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. Um, here's my NBA segment. Mavs are good. They hate this. The ops hate this. That's all. We'll leave it there. To the NFL. Uh yeah, a couple quick hits. Uh sticking on the coaches that got fire train. Mm. Uh essentially we had a mutiny by the Raiders. Appropriately so. I feel like uh Chris, uh, what's his name? Chris Berman would love that. I guarantee he'll say it. But yeah, the Raiders fired Josh McDaniels nine games into his yeah having that job, and now they're just like dancing on the dude's grave. Antonio Pierce stepped in, and uh, two zero team seems to love him. <laughs> Devontae Adams is like, I, right, I'm, I'm fucking behind this guy. Danced in the locker room, and the dude's like rejuvenated. Yeah, they look good. I don't know. It will be interesting to see. We just talked about bad contracts. Josh McDaniels was a 10-year deal, uh, and they dumped a ton of money on him. Uh, and then who did they have right before Josh McDaniels? Oh, um, of course, Chucky. They had a uh, watchman call. Gruden. Gruden, who they dumped a bunch of money on. And now Gruden's firing was different, but you've got back-to-back -back big contract coaches getting fired, and then you've got someone like Antonio Pierce, one of the lowest paid assistants in the league right now. Um, it's going to be a very highly leveraged position if you're Antonio Pierce to say, uh, yeah, I've seen the two contracts you just parted ways with and dumped money out of a plane on to get those guys out of here. Um, here's my number. And that number is likely not going to be congruent with like his experience as a head coach relevant to those two people. But Josh McDaniel's record as a head coach wasn't great either. And he got a 10 year deal. So, I'd be interested to see how that plays out. Remind me on Gruden. Did okay. <laughs> email came out. Did did that email come out as part of uh, discovery? The discovery process in the 
Was it like CTE stuff? Like the like no. Uh Commanders, formerly Washington oh. Redskins, like glass staircase, sexual harassment oh, scandals. Yeah, 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 yeah. In an attempt to get Dan Snyder to sell the team. The Dude. NFL was doing some deep digging. And at that time, Gruden was emailing his brother, a oh, head coach, God. or someone within the organization. And Made some unsavory jokes about the size of the lips of uh, the oh NFL PA's like president at the time. Dude caught the ultimate. He, not gonna say it was he wasn't wrong, but still, he got caught in writing. I will not be a part of this clip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he caught the ultimate stray, like dude. <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, I would love like I. It's not, it's not in the grand scheme of uh, NFL history. It's not a big deal at all. But I'm just very curious, like who who was behind, like oh, let's put this out there because I doubt it was someone who was like, we need to get guys like this out of coaching. It seemed like it was, or if I remember right, it seemed like somebody in the uh, Dan Snyder camp, potential diversion, or I don't, I don't remember, but I remember thinking somebody did this to distract or to, I don't know, to completely invalidate. It was a really weird deal. Thank you for clarifying. Knowing that. nothing about how like investigations like this work, but I do imagine someone on a legal team goes to some legal assistant and then drops off a list of words for them to like query in like a database of like documents. You have to find relevant documents to what you're looking for in the scope of right. your and investigation. They probably found Gruden's name, <laughs> oh you know, because God. of whatever search query they put in, and then they're reading through it <laughs> and. You know, again, I agree, but it's really, really <laughs> so, wild. Uh, whatever. Back to the Raiders, back to the NFL. So Josh McDaniels fired. Um, five games ended on a game-winning field goal. Cool. Uh, yeah, we don't need to go in depth there. One of which, uh, Josh Dobbs, 2-0 now. I think that story is pretty damn awesome. Uh, dude, and he seems to be a, a content guy. He's he's doing his own uh, yes. his own mashups his own memes, which you gotta <laughs> love that. Seems like a really good dude. It's a great guy to root for. Um, Kirk Cousins about to get Romo'd or dacked? Wally pipped? What do you mean? Wally <laughs> pipped? Yeah, I mean some are asking. Because <laughs> uh, seems like this as we as we talk about Dave Aranda showing Godfather. <laughs> And we're making Wally Pip references. I love it. Wally Pip, um, just classic baseball guy stuff. Uh, I don't know. No. I, I think his contract was going to make his 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 tenure in Minnesota limited after this year. Or so, so um, there's a lot of spots for a Kirk Cousins to have a job. Whether or not Josh McDaniels gets, or not Josh McDaniels, Josh Dobbs gets a long t contract there or elsewhere, who knows. One of those places could be uh, the Patriots because they've benched Mac Jones again Dude, in the just, middle of the game. They're terrible. It's a really, really bad. <laughs> they watch. keep starting him. He gets and then benching. Him. How is he just continuing to get worse and worse? He, looks, uh, he just looks I, lost. I think a lot of it is conf the, the understanding that that no one in the greater New England area, including the coaching staff, has any confidence in you whatsoever, and most of that is, you know, his own doing. But uh, it's not exactly empowering your guy. I mean, if you really don't think he's that bad, like maybe we just run somebody else out there. Maybe you go find your own Tommy DeVito they gonna, or something. They're going to just keep tanking and get Caleb Williams. They Seems two, like they it. They have two wins, man. They're like they're in the discussion for number one overall pick. Um, I completely forgot Kyler was coming back. And um, oh yeah, dude. It doesn't look. It doesn't look like he missed a freaking step, man. Not right. a beat. He's not even wearing a brace. It's kind of wild, isn't it? Yeah. He looked fucking fast. He's always. Yeah. He's just. He's so fucking quick. What was the actual nature of his injury? It was torn ACL. Was uh, it? ACL. It was just months. ACL. Okay. Uh, that's still pretty impressive. Um, and that's a guy that his entire his entire game is built upon the ability to be mobile uh, with and fast. A franchise that went one and nineteen without him, and there were chatters because they've got a new GM, new head coach. That like, if he doesn't make it back this season, they were just gonna, you know, professionally, politely, 
uh, see him on his way, trade him, get out from that contract however they, they could. Uh, and they still might so that that GM and head coach can move forward with their own guys. I imagine that decision is going to be heavily leveraged on, are you in a position to draft Caleb Williams? What do you think about Drake May or, you know, insert other quarterback draftable at whatever position they're in. So more to see in Arizona. Ooh, uh, speaking of got Cardinals Texans this Sunday, that's uh that might be a fun watch. CJ Stroud is, uh, appears to be that dude. He's, he's cold. He is man. Um, I don't really, I don't know. I think people, I think my, my Houston friends are being like cautiously optimistic, but I, I've seen enough and I'm, I'm willing to, to crown the guy. He's uh, quite good. Did you say that the Cardinals myself, were one in 19? But they him? were one in 19 without Kyler. Yes. And that one win. Uh, oh shit. It was, uh, <laughs> With Josh Dobbs. It was the Cowboys. <laughs> mm, week three, week four. Yeah. Tough. It's a tough scene. Tough I didn't scene. think about that. Didn't think about that. Um, yeah, and then think of how many seasons they like had those quote unquote empty like five and zero, oh, eight and zero oh starts with Cliff and Kyler before that. So yeah, things took a weird turn quickly there. Um, I caught myself thinking through coaching tree discussions with myself. Whatever, uh, D'Amico Ryan's former defense coordinator under Kyle Shanahan. Uh, obviously Mike McDaniel was OC for the Niners under Kyle Shanahan. Then you've got like Sean McVay and LA, like all of this rolls back up into, again, we're talking about Washington. So I guess we're somewhat full circle, like the Washington team that had Mike Shanahan at, co- at coach for a while. Like Mike Shanahan's coaching tree is just insane right now in terms of their presence in the NFL. If D'Amico Ryan stays on this trajectory, because you've got, Two of the top, I don't know, six coaches right now in the AFC, plus uh, what was easiest, the top coach in the NFC, uh, all within your tree. That's that's saying a lot. Plus Sean McVay, you know, wherever you want to slot him. Yeah. Um, only other notes I've got. I mean, I, Cowboy, Cowboy, that's just like, the, the third or fourth Cowboy game that's not even really worth discussing. I think it just played New York every every week. They're so, dude. Be awesome. That is one of the, it, right terrible. out of the gate, one of the worst, the worst challenge I've ever seen. <laughs> Second play of the game, right? <laughs> and it wasn't close. And it was so awkward because they're like, no, nah, we're kidding. And I was like, well, you already, we're well, going to have to burn the time out anyway. So we may as well like review it. I was like, okay. And it's just <sighs> like, dude, it's not even close. Who, who, what is this organization? It's so bad. Uh, Tommy DeVito, the highlight of the game for the Giants was Tommy DeVito's family. Because America loves a, a super Italian family from from the New York or New Jersey. They're gonna have uh, Dayball whacked after after one of these games. They were not Minnesota. happy. No, God, they were so painfully Jersey. I love it. You could read their lips during uh, like that's your fourth and two play or something like that. Very valid point too. It was a great a great point. It was an awful play call that came up way short <laughs> on fourth down. Oh my God! Uh, I just wanted uh, to yeah, add the that- locker room does not seem to be loving Dayball either. Uh, I don't know who it was, Slayton or one one of the wide receivers uh, had like a Devontae Adams moment where he just was like, what the hell am I doing here? It's got to be Why so, is this guy our coach? So like, frustrating to play for a team like that that's just so bad and like clearly not making much attempt to get better. You're seeing, I feel like this season, uh, a lot more players, and maybe it's just like the third one, but I saw somebody in the Titans just having the quote of like, I'm tired of losing here. And like acknowledging mm-hmm. that like that they're wasting their career, I feel like that's happened a number of times. Uh, Commanders, uh, I think it was Commander. Yeah, and I also said Steve Slayton, like he's definitely been retired for some time. I don't know who it was. Oh, Darius Slayton, not Steve. There you go. That's who it was. Dylan, you had a note. Uh, yeah, Robert Sala. Mm. Head coach <laughs> for the Jets has grown a beard. Mm-hmm. I don't know what took him so long. My God. Yeah, he looks he good looks, looking he's bearded guy. An absolute snack with that thing. Yeah. It's the it's the juxtaposition between the facial mm. hair and the bald head. Mm. You know, it just does something for I me. can't relate to that at all. Right. Right. I also kind of have a thing for uh head coaches who 
do the whole, I'm going to run this whole stadium full of bleachers. And he's one of those guys who like yeah. go out and like, if they're on the road or whatever, or he's done it in met life plenty of times. That's like his early morning ritual of like pregame. Like I'll just go run every stair from the, like, from the Dan Campbell school of, school of coaching a little bit, you know, like like we'll, get, a, we'll get down and do push ups with you. And one of those guys, Dabo's such a bitch. Fuck him. He runs his, <laughs> He okay. kind of does the same thing, but he just runs in front of the team he's onto such, the field. He's such a boner. That's just that's just a look at me play. He's such Get a boner. Get out of here, dude. Oh, dude coaching straight. What, what's gonna replace day. that when he's in college station is he there's no hill to run down. He's gotta do something else. Is he gonna if if he's at college station, does he like does he bump up? Is it go from like the the twelfth man to the thirteenth man? Because like the first man is obviously the man upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty good. That's got to happen. Th- that's their new 12th man is the man upstairs. So, I, I want to see this happen now. Yeah, it'll be oh, it'll please. be so this, bad, but great. Make this our official plea for a college station. I, I will commit to uh, the Revely Foundation, $15 if they hire Dude, uh, Dabo Sweeney. The the Yell guy is Dippy. doing their, their little uh, stand-up routine, and he just he – Or just, gals. He, yeah, he runs out and like – he just kind of like steps in front and starts doing his own, just starts like riffing. It's like special guest Dabo, and he comes out and starts doing it. And then it like it goes so well, he just takes over, and then they all are like, dude, what the fuck? Dabo? Oh, my God. He's like, not Jack Easterby. I want to see it. No, he kind of <laughs> is Jack Easterby. <laughs> oh, uh, all God. right. Well, we're, we're a little long here, and we've got a sports party of sorts. So I want to present this to you on the fly. Maybe a pivot of segments potentially here called Make Me Care. We've got four stories here. I'll give you the titles, and uh, one of you can uh, pick which one we roll with. Do we need an audio bed for this? No, whatever. You can run the sports party. I just don't think any of us want to hit all four of these stories in depth. We've got a UFC fight that occurred, a Hutto massacre, Shohei Otani, not really news, and uh, Kelly Oubre got hit by a car. I'll let Dylan choose. I want to do the Hutto massacre. The Hutto Hippos are a <laughs> Austin area team, just outside of Austin. Hutto's a town that's really experiencing a lot of growth. Yeah, uh, not known for uh, at their athletics. Uh, three and four uh, in district play, or maybe four and four in district play, something like that. Um, quarterback the, committed to Tech, by the way. Quarterback that's committed to Tech. They've noteworthy. got they've got a couple guys on offense. Anyway, Will Hammond. Hammond. Yeah. They drew the Duncanville Panthers uh, round one of the playoffs. And uh, I came in that morning, and I think I told Dylan and Brett, I was like, how is this a playoff team? It's just it doesn't seem like you, you make the playoffs of that record, but whatever. And uh, I was I tuned into the – I didn't – I checked Twitter, and it was, it was 56-0 at the half. And I'm just <laughs> like, dude, what? <laughs> this isn't fair. This isn't good. They, they played the band the uh, second half. Yeah, it did. He just, he put shoulder pads <laughs> on the, the trumpet section. I, big props to Duncanville for not. They clearly did put the band out there because the final score is only like sixty three seven. They took the foot off the proverbial gas. They, they ran the ball and they sat the they sat the players. Um, so but that's yeah. that's a tough scene for the Hutto Hippos. Mm-hmm. Objectively good name. Yeah, Hippos are tight. Hutto not a region not known for much hippo activity. No, but uh, cool name. <laughs> cool name. Yeah. There was a UFC fight, KJ. There was a couple of them. There was a number of them, actually. There was a good card. Uh, I watched it. You have a new light heavyweight champion. You might recognize the name Alex Pereira. Okay. That is the uh, that is the uh, the nemesis to one uh, Israel Adesanya. Um, mm. Yeah, scary guy, Brazilian dude. Took out uh, Yuri Prohaska uh, of the Czech Republic. Um, kind of a wild ass dude. Uh, good fight. Some saying early stoppage, but I think it was fine. I actually thought it was early at first, but um, whatever. Um, and then anything else? Oh yeah, Kelly Oubre did get hit by a car. I don't really know the details of that. Pedestrian. Yeah. Still looking for the driver. He yeah, he was the pedestrian. That's that's definitely important to know. Um, broken rib, I believe. Broken finger, or hand. Gonna miss significant time, but you know, uh, not like a critical situation critical condition situation in which we'll get like uber strong bracelets or something do, do we know what gil brant has to say about him just you know being out walking oh, around damn it <laughs> 
I don't believe that Kelly Oubre was just living to die, but uh, that is true as we have had multiple athletes uh, <laughs> struck by vehicle as a pedestrian what's, recently. What's the Shohei news? He no will, real news, but go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, he will possibly sign before December, the December meetings. Uh, it looks like San Francisco and LA are front runners, according to the article linked. Yeah, I've I've seen uh, I've seen the Rangers name thrown in there, and like that's a fun thing for uh, for us to toss around the office. But that's I don't know why he would do that. He's been very clear; it's a West Coast or it's nothing like, thing. It's like he wants to stay out California way. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Give me Seattle. Well, no like Seattle in, should be all in here. Keep him out. Hey, show. Hey, no state income tax here. I'm just saying. Oh, did you see who got uh, speaking of West Coast? New coach of the Angels, manager of the Angels. Oh, Ron Washington. Mm, great point. Wash. Yeah. Love Damn. him. That's great. Hey, dude, I. it's going to suck demolishing him. Um, <laughs> I'm now cocky baseball guy. Mm-hmm. Wins, wins one World Series. Look at him. <laughs> um, no, I, I love the guy. He's probably my all. I mean, in the history of DFW sports, it's like Jimmy Johnson and and Wash, which is just as far as like characters that I really like. Rick Carlisle's a dickhead. Donnie, I was about to say Don or Don Nelson, not Donnie. Don Nelson might be up there for me. He's a great character. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Rick Carlisle, definitely. God. <laughs> definitely not up Washes there. Washes me in there uh, blasting cigs. Oh, I love it. That's the way, oh, it's, that's the way yeah. it should be. I don't even feel like this is like bittersweet from the like standpoint of having to see him with the Angels. It could have been the Astros. Dusty Baker's not there anymore, or I don't know if that's been official, but like it could have been the Astros. Let's be happy that it wasn't. Yeah. I think they're looking to get younger at the position. What? I'm just keeping myself from making. Go ahead. Any, any more racially related. Hey, if you want to do it, I I certainly (laughs) won't step in the way. Uh, all right. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's run it back. Uh, a short one this week as we were loaded with like actual content. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> of course, running back, these, these segment during which we talk about what we already talked about. KJ is trying to make throated happen as a term for being under the weather. <sighs> Fortnite is Still fun. better, Will. Fortnite is fun, but there's a lot of goofy shit in the game. <laughs> Oklahoma State laid a monumental turd against <laughs> U- UCF. My monumental turd of the week. Yeah. And finally, Dave's high school absolutely slaughtered the Austin area Hutto Hippos. RIP. Uh, and that concludes Run It Back. That concludes Run It Back. Can I disclose that I dug for those other stories in Sports Party just because I know we would do the Hutto Hippo story? <laughs> and that was like the only one that I cared to talk about. I'm like, shit, I got to do something else here. <laughs> I feel like I've, I've done a great job and should be applauded for um, the. L- Limited coverage I've given uh, the high school that I didn't even play football for. Just want to say. Well, I sh- at least people- one of their alums got a touchdown this week. Two touchdowns. There you go. Hey, that, they played Washington very well. Utah's a they fucking did. dog. They're gonna run, I think they're going to run the Big 12 for a oh. couple years next year. Just, just watch out for Utah. Some are saying. Anyway. All right, we'll get All right. Bye. Bye. I want my chips with the dip. That's all I know. I don't want my chips playing. I want my chips with the dip. So bring them dips. When my team wins a big game, it's good.